so today we will continue with an introduction of uh, stochastic uh, integration. So we have seen in the previous classes the uh, definition of a stochastic process, the Brownian motion, and now um, we have also seen in the introduction uh, what is a dynamical system and so now what we are going to be interested in is dynamics that are produced both by a drift b of x so we have a drift b of x so the dynamical system that we have studied was x dot equal b of x we have also seen uh, the Brownian motion and now what we are going to be interested in is a, a dynamics that combine both this deterministic deterministic um, motion with this uh, stochastic motion and for this I would like to start um, the introduction um, through the uh, discretization discretization process so suppose we are interested in the dynamics um, generated by B and let me write it in the discretized form that x of t plus uh, delta t minus x of t so this uh, dynamics is driven by b so b at point calculated at point x of t delta t and now the way we are going to introduce the Brownian motion characterized by a tensor field sigma so sigma you can think about it for the moment as a constant so sigma that can depend smoothly on x of t and then we are going to write it b or um, w of t plus delta t minus which is the increment of the Brownian motion where w of t is our Brownian motion which as we have uh, discussed is um, a stochastic uh, variable with the, form, the, the probability density function of which is the classical Gaussian of uh, variance 1 and of um, no drift, drift is 0 okay so of course what we will be interested in is how to integrate this equation so this is uh, again a discretized uh, version so this is a discrete equation and what is the meaning of integrating this equation what is the meaning of integrating this equation integrating this equation so we are not in the uh, fundamental settings so let me now um, write this in the limit delta t uh, small as a differential operator so this we are going to write it this way x t plus delta t minus x of t as in the limit this is the limit delta t goes to zero the notation will be d of x this is a differential form dx equal b of x uh, delta t plus sigma of x multiplied by d omega so d omega or d omega t is the limit of this quantity as delta t goes to zero this is the infinitesimal um, writing for this and so this can also be written and again this is a notation x dot which is dx dt so this is what you can find in many books which is going to be b of x plus sigma of x w dot where w dot is by definition d omega dw divided by dt so now suppose that we are um, allowed to integrate equation 1 so let me rewrite equation 1 in the next slide So equation one is dx equals b of x 
plus sigma of x. Yeah, so there's a dt in here, and this is d omega. So suppose we will be allowed to uh, integrate. So what is this, at least formally? This is x of t minus x0, so integration from 0 to t, of b of x, which depend on s, ds, plus integration from 0 to t of sigma of x of s, d omega of s. So although x is a random variable, here we integrate over the uh, time delta s, which go from 0 to t. So we are going to um, see in a minute what is the meaning of uh, this integration, but at least I would say that this is known. The first integration is integration of a deterministic term, although, B o although x here can have some uh, randomness into it, but at least this integration is standard. We integrate over ds, which we are going to see using the Riemann sum. This can be um, approximated using the classical um, uh, uh, sum. Now, here is a new term, which is the stochastic term. And so, although here you can think about sigma as a constant, we'll have to define what is the meaning of d omega of s and what is the integration over this. So this is the um, introduction of um, the uh, stochastic integral, which will take us um, a few classes. So to define this, I'm going first to, uh, so the goal now is to define how to define how to define these integrals and to be able to calculate. So in general, what we are going to work on, so uh, now we are going to introduce the space um, of non-anticipating function of non-anticipating functions. So suppose x of s is a classical stochastic process. It is defined like this. And so what we would like to define, um, and omega of s, suppose this is a Brownian motion. Brownian motion with uh, variance uh, 1. Classical Gaussian. There's no drift. And we would like to define the integration from 0 to t of f of x of s, d omega s. Well, su let's uh, suppose here that f is a regular function, as regular as we need. Any function. So we are, it's a function uh, in dimension 1. x of s is uh, dimension 1. So we are going to define a space which is the space of a function f of t which are um, it's a, a, a random variable uh, such that um, so it takes values in a random in a, it, it is random and we would like to have such a properties, so those are the properties will be important, that f of t is, in is independent of all increment of the Brownian motion. That is, all increment of w of t plus s minus um, w of t, and this is for all s positive. So in some sense, the um, f of t uh, doesn't, is not correlated with any increment of the Brownian motion. And this is called the space of non-anticipating functions. 
uh, we can impose, for example, that f uh, uh, be continuous in t, but we'll see that it is not necessary. And so we'll define now the space where uh, it's a bit more restrictive that we consider the space of H20T. This is the space of function that are non-anticipating in S, but such that the integration from 0 to T of the expectation of F squared T so I should write f uh, omega here it's to remind everybody that this is a random function. Uh, dt is finite. So this is such a space and we will see that under such uh, in, in this space we can calculate this uh, integral that you see here and there. But th there is a, a meaning to uh, this uh, quantity as limits and we are going to discuss uh, what they are now. Okay, so let's first define uh, what happened for a function f of t, which is um, a stepwise function. So again, suppose we want to calculate the integration from 0 to capital T of f of uh, t d omega t. So what is the meaning of this? So suppose f is a stepwise function, is piecewise constant. So what does it mean? It means that if we are between, so this is zero, this is t, and uh, we can have um, a partition of uh, zero t into point, so t zero equals zero, less than t one, lower than tn minus 1, less than tn, which is equal to capital T. So for example, it can be a regular uh, partition. We divide the t in n steps, and this is uh, t1, and so on. So now we have a function, which is constant, and this constant can be random. So we have a random constant on each interval, tk, tk plus 1, where um, we have a constant, so f restricted in tk, tk plus 1 equals to a constant, let's call it ck. So by definition, we are going to say that the uh, integration of f of t d omega t is the sum of f let's call it uh, fk, fk omega t k plus 1 minus omega t k. So, and this is for the sum from 0, let's say, to n, uh, or n minus 1. Alright, so if we define it this way, we'll have to show later on that uh, this definition is independent. This is what we'll have to show, independent of the partition. So that any partition will give the same integral of the partition tk, t0, tn. But if, we, if we have another partition, we can calculate this sum here, um, which probably will give different numbers, but when we do all the sum, it gives here the same number, uh, the same integral, which is here. So first of all, let's uh, calculate some properties. The expectation by definition, so this is the definition of this integral. Um, this is, of course, a random number because uh, this is a sum of uh, random uh, uh, variables. And if we take the expectation of this quantity, what is it equals to? This is by definition the sum of the expectation of fk omega tk plus 1 minus omega tk. Now, by definition, of non-anticipating function, 
by the very definition, since the fk here, which are given at um, a constant, fk is really the constant fk at the point tk, um, by definition, fk is independent of the increment, as we have seen uh, previously. So if they are independent, the expectation of the product is the product of the expectation fk multiplied by expectation of this um, difference of the Brownian motion. But by definition of the property, this is exactly zero. So the sum here is zero. Right? So now what we are going to see is um, the what happened for the uh, second moment. So the second moment So the second moment is so we would like to calculate the expectation of uh, the integral from 0 to t of f of t d omega t square So this can be written as the sum of fk so let me call d omega k this is by definition so this is expectation of the sum square where in d omega k by definition will be t k plus 1 minus omega t k so now if we um, expand the summation this is fk fq d omega k d omega q and using again the um, fact that fk are independent of, of d omega k we'll get the sum of the expectation of fk fq expectation of d omega k d omega q but by definition of the Brownian motion this is zero except for k equals q for which we get the expectation of d omega q squared and this is by definition delta s so delta here this is uh, delta s k or delta t k which is t k plus one minus t k so let's call it delta k so this is equal to the sum for k equal zero to n minus one of expectation of fk squared um, tk plus 1 minus tk and so in the even in the limit uh, when k uh, goes to infinity this is now a deterministic term and this is simply the partition uh, the increment of the partition so this is exactly, because uh, fk is piecewise constant, this is exactly the, integra the integral from 0 to t of the expectation of um, f of s square ds. And by definition of the space of non-anticipating function, this is finite. So those are the properties. And so we have now defined uh, this um, we have defined the integral here from 0 to t so let's now look at what we have done we have defined the integral from 0 to t of f of s ds omega s for piecewise constant function piecewise constant function and now of course uh, we would like to extend this to continuous functions and so uh, for this so uh, um, we would like to see that in general the uh, definition f of s d omega of s can be um, taken as a limit of any approximation by piecewise piecewise function f of n of t d omega t so if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of a piecewise function so f of n are piecewise 
uh, uh, functions. So it's a family of functions that can be obtained by approximating any function f. And uh, um, the uh, property that uh, we are not going to show here is that any of such a function f of n approximate f in the h2 norm that we have defined previously. When this goes to zero, we can define here this uh, limit um, integrals for the function f. That is, again, since we have defined this quantity, we have defined this quantity just before, for functions that are piecewise constant, so fn is piecewise constant, so we know what it is by definition. And since we can show, and I'm not going to show here, that any function of f, of um, so any function in the space h2, 0, t, can be approximated in the h2 norm, like this norm here, can be approximated, can be approximated by piecewise, by this family, by a family of function f of n, so which converges in this L2 norm to f, we can de then define the uh, stochastic integral as this limit, which converges uh, almost everywhere. And uh, again, I'm not going to show it here. The reference for this, I'll refer to. Um, so the reference, this can be shown in any classical textbook about uh, stochastic integral. I refer to the book of uh, Zev Schuss either the one from 1980 or the one in Springer uh, of uh, 2009. This is the Springer uh, textbook. So I'm going to stop here for this uh, part of the class where now we have defined. So let me summarize what we have seen here. So in summary, we have defined the integral from 0 to t of non-anticipating function that uh, apply to a stochastic process uh, f of x of t and uh, we defined here what is the integral d omega of t. So x of t can be the solution of this equation b of x plus uh, sigma of x w dot. So this is important to define uh, precisely when we integrate equation 2, it will help us to understand what is the integration of this second term here. And uh, this is what we're going to see in the next class, how to use this uh, integration. But before, I'm going to derive in the, uh, the next class the um, Langevin equation from uh, the derivation of uh, Chandra Sekar.